over in Soho, which took a heavy hit from protesters last night. Very beaten up section of town right now. See the boarded up windows. There's trash everywhere. Not an easy time for the city. stood right in front of me. Here's a completely looted out store. Well, while we're in the midst of this chaos of Soho having been looted, people boarding up windows, I'll just stop to quickly take a look at what's unusual in Soho are these paving stones. You ever down here, slippery when wet. These are granite, big, huge chunks of granite that were laid down probably over 100 years ago and are the sidewalks in not all this neighborhood, but a large portion. And then if we just slide over here, look, we got granite at the apron. We got brownstone as decorative elements around the windows and a lovely brick edifice. Soho. Third night of rage, 2020. Here's our lovely brick building again with the brownstone detailing and the shop, Montclair. I don't remember what they sell, but they were cleaned out. So, days of rage. And there's that beautiful, look at that big chunk of granite. The base, the apron of the building brownstone right above it and then Soho's distinctive granite sidewalk here's a building that you can't really say much about they painted probably their limestone detailing but I thought we'd just look at the Ferrety window because this speaks to mineralogy and uh, the way in which humans have been able to design glass that doesn't shatter in shards. And Faraday, you can see whoever designed this class, the strike from the looting that didn't work at this spot, created this mosaic of glass that didn't actually then fall out. And that's because whoever made this glass had inserted into the silicon dioxide elements that force it to break along a certain pattern when it's struck with a lot of force. They do the same thing with car windshields. So. Big love, big apple, says here from Chobani. We're at famous Sprint Street and Prince and West Broadway and Coach, they took it on the chin. They had boarding up people just went right through the boarding and cleaned that store out. We're on 10th Avenue now. We got out of Soho and construction here goes on unabated. I don't know what they're going to hang on that building's face, but it's all set up. Come back, maybe it'll be stone or maybe just like what's in the back there. Yeah, it looks like they're hanging stone. Thin slabs that are cut from the quarry. So you see the aluminum frame, or steel frame, it wouldn't be aluminum. And then you see that yellowy stone that's hanging just in thin slabs off of this construction. And we go over up here, more construction, that's with brick. And then this strange beehive with brick. And I'll stop there. You know, when you come over here after the Soho rampage and you see this construction which is around the high line you realize why people are probably angry you know it's like plenty of money for all of this but as I was saying in another one of these little rock diaries every time they build one of these not a penny for a new school 
goes into the development. We're still near 10th Avenue and I just came over to look at this building that is, this was a seminary for Anglican priests and here's their brownstone wall, which we can see up close. And this is your classic sandstone, part of perhaps plate tectonics theories, old red sandstone could be from the Triassic period when Pangea broke up. In any event, it forms the base, the apron, and then all the detailing around the windows. Brownstone in New York, Anglican Cemetery, Chelsea, near the High Line. One last thing about these Anglicans. By the way, this is a one of your new buildings near the High Line designed to kind of look old. That's probably a limestone around those windows. It's probably like, you know, half an inch thick, not a block, just hanging. But here's the seminary. I just wanted to mention one thing. So some years ago, they wanted to replace their heating and they have one of the more unique heating systems and cooling systems in the city. They have geothermal heating and cooling with a device called a heat exchanger. So they dug down several hundred feet where they're able to pump air down to a level under the ground where the temperature is always consistent. In the winter, they can, they can actually take cold air and make it warmer and bring it back up. And in the summer, they can take warm air and make it cooler and bring it back up.